the next big step in our ability to access food and therefore to continue to evolve socially and economically came about as we introduced farming. A reminder that there are a number of videos that are peppered throughout all of these presentations and you are responsible for the content of each of those. So there are three in a row all about the introduction of agriculture and the implications of that. Make sure you watch them. So we're going to change gears a little bit and actually look at what's happening in the U.S. when it comes to the types of foods that are being produced. And therefore, what you find in the grocery store. That is going to be driven by agri agribusiness. The processed food industry, which really started to develop during World War II and after World War II, as well as the type and amount of cooking that we are doing or not doing, and that emphasis is on not doing because about 10% of the normal American diet comes from fast food. So let's talk a little bit about what agribusiness is. We have this concept that farms are these bucolic places where cows, milk cows are in the pasture grazing and they're called in twice a day in order to be milked. And there are small farmers that are paying their fields and producing grain for the livestock. In actuality, agriculture is an enormous business. And many of the farms are simply enormous, whether they be family farms or major corporations. So there's the definition of what agribusiness represents. Pretty much anything that provides value added to the food that you eat. As I mentioned, 10% of the average U.S. family's income is spent on fast foods. I think I tweaked that a little bit, but that's what that's. This is a fact. In addition to that, we are eating more and more and more meat. Demand has grown about 50% since 2010. And those are two factors that are going to have an enormous effect on the crops that are produced by agribusiness. We're really oftentimes talking about what's known as monoculture and not agriculture. We have these enormous factory farms that are going to produce a handful of crops corn, soy, factor, and factory farm animals, and those factory farm animals are in feedlots or, or are in buildings, which is atypical for the way that they would ordinarily live. The reason we do that is because of their, because of the economies of scale and because it's, at least from the corporate standpoint, more efficient in producing those crops or raising those animals. This will also help drive down the financial cost of food, but the ecological costs are turning out to be devastating. Let's talk a little bit about the joys of fast food. I can remember, yes, this is how old I am. I can remember when McDonald's had a sign on it. The local McDonald's had a sign on it which said 100,000 burgers sold. Think about that. McDonald's is proud of 100,000 burgers being sold. Holy cow. So the french fries that they produce are made from a very specific species of potato, which is the russet Burbank. And everywhere in the world where you get McDonald's french fries, they are using russet Burbank. It has the appropriate size and the appropriate length to produce those lovely standardized fries that you find in Mickey D's. And this is despite the fact that this potato is quite difficult to grow. Not only is it hard to grow, it's also hard to produce perfect potatoes. A single blemish in one of those potatoes means it's not usable. 
they get these sort of spots or lines that run through the potatoes, and that's called net necrosis. And to prevent that, growers have to really use a ton of pesticides to destroy the aphid that is actually causing that net necrosis. So there is a pesticide which is known as monitor, and it is, was, is enormously toxic. It killed the aphids, great, but it's so toxic that farmers wouldn't go into their fields for at least five days after they sprayed it. And when the potatoes were harvested, they would be stored for six weeks or more in these ginormous climate controlled warehouses because the toxic gases had to be released. The, the potatoes actually had to off gas. The good news is that Monitor has been phased out. And the reason that Monitor has been phased out is because people like you and me found out what it was doing and boycotted McDonald's and insisted that they stop using this incredibly terrible pesticide. So I bring this example up because it, sometimes it feels like you really can't do much to affect what happens in the world, but you can. Each and every one of us can affect what ha happens in terms of the foods that we eat by the choices that we make. If enough people are making the right choices, the food processing process and industry will change. So let's continue on a little bit with talking about corporations as sources of food. Corporations, the food processing plants are going to add fat, sugar, and salt because it makes the food more delis delicious. And it, they're also relatively inexpensive. When those flavors are put into food and melded, blended together, they do trigger addictions. And when you hear, oh, craveability, snackability, those are terms that food processing companies use in order to develop food that people will buy and eat. That's what they're striving for. They want people to crave their food and become addicted to their food. And no, I am not kidding. So we ended up with a food industry or food processing industry, thanks to World War II. The reason for that is because we had these enormous numbers of troops that were going overseas, both to the pack rim and over to Europe. And we needed to be able to provide shelf stable foods that could travel a long distance. So they had to be easy to move around and they had to be light. The military partnered very closely with a number of universities, including our friend Cornell, and the corporations got these incredibly lucrative contracts to develop this food that was shelf stable, easy to transport, and light. All of those were developed for World War II. Margarine was actually developed prior to World War II, but its use came into play and became much more, much more popular during World War II because they, the military needed a way to provide fat that was not going to go rancid. So I love this, fabricated modules of meat will rise to Nick ribs, never had them. Dehydrated compressed cheese, also known as jungle cheese, is the basis of Cheetos and powdered juices. All of those were developed during World War II or specifically for the troops for World War II. Then what? You know, the war ended and the corporations had lost these really lucrative contracts. So why did the food industry, food processing industry boom? Because you had a lot of servicemen coming back from the war. They got married. They started to raise families and all sorts of time-saving appliances were introduced the ease and the speed of producing meals from processed food was a lot easier than starting from scratch. So you saw an increase in the 
numbers and types of canned foods and freeze dried foods, et cetera. And starting in the 60s and 70s, particularly in the 70s, women started to start working away from home. They are started to enter the workforce. So the food processing companies were smart and they started to advertise their processed food as a convenience for women who are working out of the, outside the home. There was an increased division of labor between the genders. Women are still, even to this day, are still sort of seen as the primary caretaker for children. And the person who cooks in the majority of American households People who live in Tompkins County are somewhat unique because there seems to be more equality in terms of the roles, splitting roles and ta home care tasks. But in most of America, women are still considered the people who are supposed to be cooking. So, as I said, the food processing companies really started to target working women. And that women's liberation was stressed because allegedly these processed foods gave women a lot more freedom from cooking because they could basically slap a TV dinner in the microwave, nuke it, and voila allegedly a full and nutritious meal. Fast foods also started to, the growth of fast foods also, is also started to accelerate during this time period for the same reason. So take a look at these statistics. I'm sighing because it makes me very sad. I checked this information yesterday, 73% of foods food products are considered ultra processed and look at what that includes. And as I mentioned, processed foods are clinically proven to be addictive because of sugar, fats, and salt. And if you take a look at that last bit of information, 80% of total calorie consumption comes from store bought foods and beverages both packaged and unpackaged. So pretty much all of us are going to the local Wegmans or Tops or what the heck else are some other grocery stores? I'm trying to think of some that are from in the South. Winn-Dixie used to be the A&P, used to be the P&C. There's still a P&C in the area and purchasing food. Very few people actually grow food at this point in time. And I understand why it's time consuming and it's difficult. So why should we care about this? We should care about what we put into our mouths and eat and consider nutrition because of the increase in rates of pretty much every single disease that is crippling our country. If you take a look at the major killers, major causes of death in the US, you'll see a very direct correlation to the type of food that people eat, cardiovascular disease, non-insulin dependent diabetes, cancer, and other chronic, there will also be other chronic long-term effects of diet. We're going to be talking about that and about your gut microbiome and how that affects your health as we go through this course. So what can you do today or the next time you go to the grocery store? Because you're going to go to the grocery store, let's face it, to improve your health and to improve what you eat. Think about the grocery store. Think about where the fresh foods are placed. Fresh foods tend to be placed around the perimeter of the store because the turnover is high, demand is high, 
because these products tend to go bad much faster than processed foods. So the foods that are placed around the perimeter of store of the store can get swapped out much more easily when they start to look in cases of vegetables or fruit limp or rotted. And in cases of carbohydrates like bread or sweets that are produced in a bakery, go stale. There is a caveat, however. There are highly processed foods, including yogurt and lunch meats that are also placed around the periphery of the store. Do your best to stick to the vegetable and bakery and meat areas. And we're gonna be talking more about what you need to look for in terms of meat. And you can make excursions into the frozen food section as long as you are buying frozen vegetables and frozen fruits that have not been processed. The fro frozen veg and fruit are flash frozen, so they maintain most of their nutrients. Avoid the processed foods that you find in the frozen food area. That's what you can do today or the very next time you enter a grocery store. Start thinking about what you're putting in your mouth and your family's bodies. Stay tuned for more.